So we've given it enough time. I think there, there are still some more people that are registered that are not here. But you know this, you guys, this is a, a Flipping America RIA hack for you right here. If you want the content, but you can't make the time, just register for the uh, call and you'll get an email with the video replay. How about that? Because we're recording them. And we're also live on Facebook. All right. So up on my screen. I don't know if that's just because of my, do what you froze. Oh, I lost my internet connection. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's okay. Let's switch over here. Not that one, this one. And I've got the announcements. <laughs> Yay. The announcement roll. And Nick is here and you guys are going to hear from him in just a minute. This is today. Tomorrow night, Dave Debo is going to be joining us. Uh, some of you remember he did a little teaser about a month ago about raising private money, and it was awesome. I, I immediately said, man, we got to get you back as soon as possible to go deep in this. And so we're going to do a 45-minute um, presentation tomorrow night on raising private money. Now, this is not necessarily to compete with hard money, and they're sitting over here behind me right now, uh, and I got my back to them, so who knows what they're doing. <laughs> anyway, but uh, <laughs> but it's to compliment hard money, and uh, I've said many times, and I will say again, sometimes you want to use private money, sometimes you want to use hard money, sometimes you want to use your own money, and many times the deal or your situation will dictate which. This is coming up next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I'm honored to have Chris Prefontaine, one of the uh, biggest trainers and coaches in real estate in the country. And he's going to be here next Wednesday with a live call. And I am going to be live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo Audience roars, flipping Knoxville. We're coming to you next Wednesday. We're going to, we're going to give you another chance to redeem yourself and bring people out for the event. And uh, we're trying, we're trying to push through the pandemic. We're really trying. And uh, maybe one of these days uh, we'll actually start getting people out, but I'm going to be there Wednesday in Knoxville and uh, we'll be doing this call from Knoxville. It won't, it won't look any, well, it will look different because I'm not in my studio, but it, uh, it's not going to be any different uh, effect for any of you. Oh, okay. There you go. Sorry. I um, had a little glitch here with my, all right, now we're back. All right. Anyway. There'll be a dead end barbecue. Oh, we're going to be at the dead end. Yeah. Okay. We are going to be at the dead end barbecue. I guess maybe you, you heard Chip. Okay. For those of you that are in Knoxville or in the Knoxville area, or if you want to come to Knoxville and uh, for those of you that haven't met me in person, that's a good way to do it. You know, it's hard to get into this building and into the studio here, but uh, it'd be easy to find me at the dead end barbecue right over next to the uh, rib bar. All right. Then next Thursday night, Benson Juarez is going to join us and we're going to uh, look at get privy. Now I'm a big fan of privy already. I, I have my license and I, I use privy to look at properties, but there is a huge announcement coming next week. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the announcement without Benson. Um, you know, they have been working, negotiating with MLS as one at a time. If you don't know what privy is, it is, it uses live MLS data, like a lot of the other software packages or database uh, user interfaces that sit on top of the MLS data in the local communities. They, um, they are another interface with the MLS data, but it's designed for investors and with investors in mind. You could see where the hot flip areas are. You could see a lot of times you could see before and after pictures. You could see what the other people are doing in the area and you get a really good sense of, of how hot the, the market is and, and the trends and what's going on and how to compete. Plus you can find deals using, because it's live MLS data right through the Privy platform. Well, They've been slowly but steadily negotiating their way um, into the major markets across the country. And um, I, I'm not sure exactly when, but the announcement is about to be made. They are going to be nationwide. So you're going to be able to use them in any market anywhere. And that's pretty cool. Benson has the details. He'll give it next Thursday night on the call. But already I've got a link there. If you want to get the Privy program, uh, you should go ahead and look into it. This is I Flipping America. Yeah. Way, on that previous screen, yeah. down at the bottom where you had your Bitly link, it's not showing up on the on the webinar. Um, look here. Oh, it's cut off. Oh, okay. Well, let me see what I can do about that. Let's see. I'll adjust the screen size here. Look, it's good to have 
feedback right here. How about now? Nope. Well, I don't know what to do about it then. Okay. Well, you could see it in the artwork, right? Um, uh, yes. Okay. It's in, that's that's it in the artwork. Yeah, and but, and don't go there today anyway, because I have to go create. Uh, I, I ran out of time this morning, <laughs> and I have to go create the the webinar and those links. But that you'll have them, and they'll be good by this afternoon. All right. This is Flipping America. It is a show. Um, heard coast to coast three times a week on AM FM stations around the country. And it becomes a podcast after that. And it's on all of major podcast platforms. We're on 35 podcast platforms, more than half of them I'd never heard of, but anyway, people listen. So that's great. Um, it is a real estate investors association, which this meeting is a part of. It is an academy designed to teach people the science and art of real estate investing. It is a buyer's club where we have a done for you service, where we find houses across the country that are really inexpensive that you can buy for cash and you can sell or finance and realize really good, really good cash flow and returns coming soon. It'll be a store and coming uh, sooner than the store is the network and it's looking like a, a mid-January launch for the Flipping America Network, and it is going to rock. I can't wait to talk about that and, and tell you more. Um, I've been seeing some of the mock-ups and the wireframes and the, and the uh, functionality has been uh, improved and strengthened and the user interface, and uh, it's going to be great. I'm very excited about it. Okay, so you can check your favorite podcast provider, listen to the show, and this is the Real Estate Investors Association, the Flipping America RIA. We don't intend to compete with local RIAs. We intend to complement local RIAs by just helping them in any way we can. We're based here in Atlanta. This is just a for instance. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am willingly and gladly a subgroup of the Atlanta RIA here. Dustin Griffin is a friend. We've been friends for a long time and uh, happy to work together with the Atlanta RIA, supporting what they're doing. And uh, we want to do that with the local RIAs in all of the cities where we have representation. And we, we've just added Flipping Louisville, as many of you know, but we're getting ready to add three more cities in the next couple of weeks. And I'll be announcing that too. So we're already in 25 cities across the country, 25 groups. We've got multiple groups in Atlanta, so not quite 25 cities. But um, if you are interested in joining the group, you could do it for as little as $10 a month and you could see the benefits of joining here. And if you're interested in leading a group, all you have to do is cover what it costs me to form the group for you. And that's $35 a month. But when you're leading a group, you have an opportunity to make money representing us in your local market and around to the people that you know. And there's, oh, I'll just go back. The, the uh, link there is bit.ly slash Faria join. If you go to that link, you can see all of the different membership levels explained and look forward to having you join the Flipping America RIA. In the meantime, these calls are free. You, you didn't pay anything to log in here. Nobody was doing a check to see if you were a member of any kind of an association or anything like that. It's free. And, um, in time, I don't know exactly what the timeline is. We've been pushed back because of COVID and it may not even happen this year, but in time, we're going to be broadcasting live out to Facebook and YouTube. And those, and these presentations are going to stay up for about a week. And then they're going to go behind the flipping America Ria paywall as we get a little bit more established and have people there. Um, there's, if you want to take an online course in real estate, it's the flipping America Academy bit.ly slash flipping America Academy, no capital letters in there. Bitly is very sensitive about capital letters. So you have to pay attention to that. And here is the course that we're featuring today. It's the real estate investing quick start. It's 15 lessons designed to help you understand what is a good fit for you in real estate investing. It gives you a bunch of paperwork, some contracts to buy and sell, talks about how to find deals, talks about what a deal looks like and uh, how to use other people's efforts to help you find deals like bird dogs and wholesalers and that sort of thing. It, it It's 15 lessons designed to get you started. And uh, I try to hold your feet to the fire and make you accountable in the course by having you making offers by the second week. You won't feel ready. You won't be ready, but I want you to make offers anyway. And I teach you what you can do to create yourself an escape hatch, but also what you can do to uh, get somebody else to take a look at your deal. If somebody actually says yes to one of your offers, the key to being in this business is making offers, make lots of offers. And so today 
Um, this is we're going to give a, we're going to give uh, two people on the call this course. You ready? All right, Will's got a uh, Will did Will pick the number? Oh, Will pick the number. This is Will Dyer, everybody from uh, Bay Mountain Capital, and uh, he picked yeah Bay Mountain Capital. We're going to hear from them in just a minute. So Will pick the number, and it's the super secret number they've got written down over there. So what you need to do is go into the chat and. Um, let me get back to the right scene here. Go into the chat, put your name, where you're from, because we like to know that, and your number between one and 100. Oh my goodness, it's doing that to me again. All right, I'm back. All right, I'm gonna have to take care of that in just a minute, but I will in just a minute. Um, anyway, pick a number between one and 100, and the two people who are closest to the number are going to win this course. Now this course sells for $297. If you don't win today, you can get $200 off because of the pandemic and use the coupon code social distance learning. So hold your fire on registering, but there's the link. You can take a screenshot bit.ly slash RE quick start. If you win the course today, great. I'll send you a coupon uh, code later that will make it zero. And if you don't win the course, you can always take it, uh, with that coupon and save $200, $97. Okay. That's, I went backwards. Here we go. Now we're going forward. The coaching program is resuming October the 14th and it's the six month coaching program. And what we've decided to do here is we're going to do a month in between October and November, and then we're going to come back for six months, January through June. So if you sign up now, you get seven months for six and I also can tell you that this is this is not just fixing and flipping. This is a comprehensive, this is how to be in the real estate business, how to create income through fixing and flipping, how to use that to buy the right kind of, of cash flowing income producing properties, uh, a look at every possible thing that you could be involved in, a deep dive into some of those things, the things that I've done and, and you know, feel credible to present myself as an expert and talking with other experts along the way. And it comes with a coaching call every Wednesday night and a personalized investment plan based on your life circumstances and your personality. Yep. There's a personality test involved. And uh, we, we kind of dig into the, your situation a little bit because what's the correct approach for me is not the correct approach for Chip or Will or the other people. Uh, or any of you, maybe we all have our own unique abilities and, and mixture of life circumstances. We try to help you discover that. And then on the coaching calls, there's no real agenda every Wednesday night, except to, you know, solve the problems or, or answer the questions that you're confronting as you're out there doing the business. So use the coupon code purple mountains and you save half price. And, uh, I I'm just going to tell you, um, I think it's worth $6,000 to spend six months with me as your coach. No, no hesitation, no question about that. But because of the pandemic, it's uh, use this coupon code. It's half of that it's 2987 and here's or 29. I don't know. You, you'll see it there. But um, the other thing that I want to tell you is we have just decided this week and we don't even have a mechanism in place for it yet, but we will take payments. I will finance you. There's no credit check involved. I'll just finance you in six payments of $600. That makes your total cost 3,600 instead of 29 something. Um, but if you want to go on the payment plan, you want to be a part of the coaching plan, six payments of $600. I don't think there's a better coaching deal anywhere on earth. Okay. This is the Flipping America Buyers Club. I, I would encourage you to join the club. If you're going to join the club, you need to do it soon. The membership is filling up. We're limiting it to 200 members nationwide. And then the club doors will be closed. We'll have a waiting list. And if we see that we're getting more houses than our club members can buy, then we'll open up for additional members at some point in the future. But what we're talking about here is houses like this. Now, this slide is a week old. This house is already sold. Uh, someone in the club bought it and it's gone but you can see for yourself there what kind of numbers we're talking about. A club member bought the house for 18,100 and knowing that the fair market rent is $800 a month, we show you how to do that. And they're going to try to get someone to give them 2000 down. They're going to sell it as is, where is no rehab, no tenants, no toilets, no termites, no repairs, no fixing, just sell it. Someone's going to come by and they're going to see, well, uh, up and down the street, they can rent that house for 800, but here they have a house that's in pretty good shape. It needs to be, you know, power washed, but 
uh, it inside it's livable. We've looked at some pictures and, and so forth, but they can get this house for seven fifty for 10 years and they can own it and it's cheaper than rent. And if you sell it that way, the club member will make a 31% return on their money. All right. That link is no good. We're not doing any webinars right now. I'll let you know when we're doing some webinars, I meant to take that slide out. All right. Thanks to our sponsors. American IRA can help you with your uh, self-directed IRA. They are really great at it. I think the best IRA custodian out there, but they're more than a custodian. They also own the trust company. And that means they actually have the funds and they have the lowest fees, the best fee structure and the smartest people, in my opinion, for what it's worth. Um, Mike Ventry is the director of business development. He'd be eager and happy to speak with you directly. Mike Ventry, V-E-N-T-R-Y at AmericanIRA.com. And you can also just explore by going to AmericanIRA.com forward slash Flipping America. That way they'll know I sent you. And then we've got the gentleman here from Bay Mountain Capital. They're one of our sponsors. We're glad to have you. Will kind of runs the company and Chip is here. I don't know if you've got decided who's going to talk first. I think Jeff's going to talk first. I'm still trying to get my voice okay. back from coaching baseball. Yeah, Will's got a little throat issue thing going on over there. Okay, go ahead. So, Bay Mountain Capital, hard money lender out of Dallas, Texas. I am the Atlanta Southeast representative uh, based here in Atlanta. And we've got your fix and flip loans. We are now offering 100% financing of both your purchase and rehab if you're an experienced investor. If you're a new investor, then we would be at 85%. And somebody who's just done one or two would be at a 90%. So uh, we, we can go up to 65 or 70% of the after repair value, depending on that experience. And the interest rate can be between 9.9% and 11.9% also based on experience. So I'd love to talk to you about that. Uh, put my information in the chat. You can give me a call or send me an email and we can talk about it. All right. And Will Dyer's here. Do you have enough voice to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody. <laughs> I, I've got a little bit of a voice left. So I apologize for the, uh, the, 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 the tweaks in my voice or whatever you want to call them. Okay. But uh, yeah, so um, we are uh, based on Dallas. We're all over the Southeast, uh, Texas, Oklahoma. We keep expanding. We do commercial. We do single family. We do it all. And we'd love to hear about your next fix and flip project. And hopefully we can uh, work together. So thanks so much for joining all right. Now we've also got a couple of the other guys from Bay Mountain on the call. Eric Moore is with us. I've unmuted you. Eric, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to this call. Uh, we're super excited to be here. Um, I am over the South Texas market. So Austin, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, and in between. I'm super excited. One of the, the things about us, and, and Chip alluded to, to um, this when he was speaking, is we're a one-stop shop. So if you're a Burr strategy person, if you are an Airbnb person and you want to you know, fix up something and still use the same company to um, rent it out, to get a loan, to use that property as a rental, whether it's short-term or whether it's long-term, um, we are your one-stop shop. We have very competitive rates and we're super happy to be here and to serve you. So I will leave my contact information in the comment section and I look forward to hearing from you. All right. Thank you, Eric. Always great to see you and hear from you. And Muhammad is on the call too. Muhammad, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. Um, first off, thanks for joining the call. Um, I am currently overseeing the greater Houston area. Uh, for any investors that are, you know, focused on, um, uh, in that, in that, on that geography, feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to you know, look it over with you and see what we can offer. We've actually uh, just just launched um, a newly revised program, which is uh, pretty exciting, and uh, um, you know, definitely looking forward to to you know working on any deals and taking a look at what's currently out there. Uh, so feel free to reach out. I'm going to include my contact information in the chat and look forward to speaking with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Now. Um... We're going to we're going to turn it over to Nick in just a moment, and uh, I will introduce him in just a moment. So, Nick, get yourself ready. But I want to encourage everybody to make this a true networking event in the chat. Say hello to everybody. Introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Tell us what you're doing in real estate. And, you know, if you were in one of my live meetings, I always want to hear from everybody there. And I want to hear you tell me what can I do to help you grow your business? I'm genuinely interested in helping you grow your business. Look, I'm not doing the Flipping America Ria for the money. 
there's really not any money in this. I'm doing it because one of my big goals every year is I really want to help other people in this business. There's plenty of room for everyone to prosper in this business. And I just get a kick out of helping people do it. So that's it. If I can help you grow your business, I want you to let me know. I know that you'll be respectful of my time, which that's why I don't give out my cell phone number. But um, seriously, tell us how we can help you grow your business in the chat and say hello to everybody. Talk to each other. And Nick, are you there? I'm going to switch over to this view here now because I think I, I want to pick here. up. Yeah. Oh, no, that was a mistake. Let's here. let's switch back here. We, <laughs> we went to infinity there. I don't know how we're going to get you uh, uh, into this. A thing with with what I'm throwing out live, I'll figure that out. But go ahead, Nick. Uh, I, I, let me tell you all this. I got distracted by the technology. I had Nick on the show. I don't know what how long ago it's been. Nick, uh, six or eight months, months, two three months, maybe. I don't know. It I, seems like time has stood still, so I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well. Um, anyway, I was so impressed with this young man. Of course, you you might think it's stereotypical that the young guy really gets the tech, right? But not all young guys really get the tech, but he is into it. And he, he knows the technology. He knows how to use the programs. And if you go to his site, Income Digs, you can get help with all kinds of tech solutions for your real estate business. So we decided to pick one and feature it. And we've been pointing this for a few months now. And uh, the one that he picked is Asana. I have some affili uh, familiarity with Asana. And uh, so I'm interested to see this really get fleshed out right in front of our eyes. So Nick, Nick Baldo, take it away. If you have questions for Nick, put them in the Q&A tab and we'll make sure we answer them before we get out of here. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks a lot, Roger. Great to be back and uh, great to share this time with everybody who's on the call. Uh, hoping that we can really just add some value. Um, so, you know, I will say as I and uh, Roger, if I could just get permission to share my screen. Oh, yeah. I got to do that, don't I? Um, so go. as Roger mentioned, I'm into the tech. Um, I, I come from a background as a strategy and operations consultant. So I've worked with, uh, right out of college, I was working with companies and I was helping them assess their situation. And there's all these holes and problems that we would find operationally. And typically we'd be solving them with software. I took that, you know, what I was doing with the corporate world, I got into real estate myself. And then I started solving those problems from my own real estate business. And then Kind of turn that into income digs, which is my coaching and consulting business, where I teach small business owners, most of whom are real estate investors or in, in real estate in some way, I teach them how to leverage technology to grow and scale their business. So I'm super happy to be with you today. I'm going to show you, as, as Roger mentioned, we're going to specifically talk about Asana, which we chose really because it's a great quick win. It's relatively easy to understand. And if you're not doing anything in this area right now, the difference uh, in using a software like Asana it can be huge and it, it just a huge impact for your business. All right, so I will just start uh, presenting here and we're gonna be doing mostly just right into the, um, oops, right into Asana. So that's where we're gonna be spending most of the time. I just wanna get us primed a little bit with just uh, a little bit of uh, background on it and my philosophy on it, all right? So, um, the first thing that I'll say is that we're already doing what Asana does in some way, shape, or form. So I mean that task and project management. So Asana really is a task management tool, and lately they've gotten pretty good at project management as well. We already do it to run our lives and to run our businesses, right? The difference is, are we using software to do it? And to what degree are we organized with the way that we manage our tasks and our projects? Our list of stuff to do today it exists. It either exists on a sheet of paper, it exists in software, it exists in our brain, or most commonly, it's a combination of all of those, okay? So we're already doing all of this. It's really just a question of how in control are we um, in, in you know, managing all of that, okay? And of course, now more than ever, in, in, in throughout time, it's going to be an increasing need to have some way to stay organized because we have so many distractions we're being pulled in a million different directions. And if you're like me, when it comes to business opportunities, I am guilty of saying yes to too much and getting too much on my plate. So that's a problem I need to work on. But in the meantime, I need some kind of system to manage that. And that's just growing every single day. All right. So some guiding principles to task management. And this, I really want to center our conversation around this. Okay. The first one is that the process is greater than the technology. So today, 
we're talking about Asana. Asana is a great tool. It's simple. I love the user interface. I use it for my own business. I coach it. However, don't get bogged down in Asana. Okay, what I'm teaching today is really about process. There might be another software that you use or that you're interested in that could do the same thing, and that's fine. You're, it's really about, do I have some kind of methodology <clears throat> to log my tasks, log my projects, have a place to go to find all of that? That's the important part. The process is way more important. And so one thing, and Roger kind of made a little joke about, you know, the young guy interested in tech. I am certainly interested in the tech. And, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, I'm interested in finding automated ways to do things, but there's no substitute for learning the process in doing the work. Uh, there's no technology that's going to, you know, close every deal for you and negotiate every deal for you that can't happen. So there is a need for us to do the work, learn the process, establish a way of doing things, and then have the technology come in to supplement that to allow us to scale our business. So, um, you know, even though I love all this tech stuff, that is not lost on me. Another important part of what we're going to talk about today is having a single source of truth. So your system for holding all this information, your tasks and your projects it's only as strong as it is your single source of truth. So what I mean by this, if we have a place that we're storing our tasks, right? But we have a different place that, you know, maybe we have personal stuff here, but then we have our one business project, we're managing something, you know, in Builder Trend or Reich or Monday. Now I'm going to two different places. Maybe I'm going to Gmail for another one or Outlook for another. The more sources of information, the more our system has the potential to break down. So it's going to be really important. And again, one of the reasons I love Asana, it enables you to have that single source of truth. And then lastly, as I've kind of been saying a little bit as we go here is keep it simple. Okay. We don't need to create this crazy elaborate um, system that we never use. We need to keep it simple so that we can get our work done. Okay. This one right here, Honestly, you know, as I'm in coaching and consulting, it probably means I bring in less when it comes to my consulting fees because I can build crazy systems. I can build all these cool automations. But if it doesn't work for the customer, for you guys, for those who are out running your business, if it's way too complex, then I'm not interested in it at all. It needs to be simple to be applicable. All right. So with that, let's get into Asana a little bit. So show you what it is now. If you haven't seen Asana, this is going to look like just a completely crazy situation, but I'm going to try to break it down a little bit. I have a bunch of sample information in here and just going to try to demonstrate the various features of Asana. The first thing I want to talk about is our ad hoc kind of administrative stuff that we have to do every day, right? So, um, you know, somebody sends me an email that says, um, can you give me that proposal? And that's something I need to do in my head. I think I need to do it. I put it on my task list. So that at its simplest form, that's what Asana is, is a task list. So what we're looking at right now is a list of tasks, okay, with various other pieces of information, okay? So you can see here that I have right here, I have a proposal to do for 9844 Zimmerman, okay? So that's on my task list. And then we have due dates over here. This is one of many ways to display my list of tasks. I'm currently in my tasks and I'm just showing it. So I have a list of tasks here and in the simplest form, all this is Asana is a task list. Now this might seem overwhelming to some like, oh my God, it's just an ever growing, just gigantic task list. First of all, I'll say this, that I use, I've used Asana for seven years and most of my tasks, and this is gonna be kind of my next part, are recurring, meaning they're automatically generating themselves. And so my task list is almost like never ending. There's never going to be an end to it because there's daily, monthly, quarterly tasks that I have to get to. This is one view. This shows me everything. What Asana is so good at is providing us the various pivot points to filter on. Okay. That means that I can filter on tasks that only pertain to a certain part of my business or to a certain specific project as well, which I will show you. But let's just stay here for a second. And let's get into a, um, a task, okay? So for example, what I, I just clicked on that task and you saw this thing pop up on the right. Basically what this does is it adds some context 
to my task. Right here, I have the name of the task, the day it's due, and then a little tag here. When I open it up, we see that I have a bunch more information that can show up here. So I could put in a description, which is going to be key for delegation. We can do subtasks, we can have conversations, we can attach files, we can do a ton with this, right? So the idea is my task is 9844 Zimmerman, but maybe there's other pieces of information that I require to get that task done. Maybe there's a discussion that I need to have with my team, okay? And that can all happen within this task here. And we're always kept in tune with what the context of that is, okay? So um, one other thing I want to state on this is these colors here, right? So like if you're looking at this and you're like, what is going on with all this? So this is my way of organizing. I use tags and I use projects. Okay, so right here I have a project called Opportunity. So basically this business, this is one of my businesses called Oakvale where I sell retail renovations, re, uh, retail remodels, right? So I have a selling portion of my workflow and that is what I call opportunities. So this is something that falls into my opportunities. And you can see under Oakvale here, I have my projects laid out. So I have a project for my admin and bookkeeping opportunities. And then I actually have the projects we're working on. So when I say this task list is gigantic and overwhelming and it might be a little bit much, that's what this is for. So I can go over to my opportunities, click on it and see, okay, here are the tasks pertaining to my sales pipeline, my opportunities that I need to get done, okay? So we always have these different pivot points and filter points within Asana to understand the specific points of the context with, when I, with which I'm working, okay? I have one up here, we talk about like admin tasks, okay? So these are tasks that fall into an administrative category. There's nothing really, um, you know, they're really quick. There's not really much that I need from them. And you can see over here, there's actually that little um, circling thing means they're actually mostly recurrent, which I'm gonna get into in a second, all right? But at its simplest point, Asana is a task manager, okay? I start every single day going to my tasks. Okay. Usually, I hope I don't have as many tasks overdue, but it happens, right? Every single day, I'm looking at what is on my list of tasks for the day, and then I'm going to start breaking those into different contexts based on how I'm working on my day and potentially delegated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's get into uh, some the true power behind my daily task list, which is the recurring tasks. Okay. And this is where, this is probably like where all of the power of Asana helps me the most. Okay. So not only do I, every time a, a task pops in my head, I quickly add it to Asana, which by the way, they have really great iOS apps and Android apps as well. But the recurring tasks are really the heartbeat of my business. Okay. I say the heartbeat because of the recurring sequence. So if I go back to my admin, and I have one here, send payroll preview, okay? This one's actually delegated to my assistant. So every two weeks, I have a task for my assistant to go into my bookkeeping software, QuickBooks, and look at payroll, look at the hours everybody submitted, and send out a payroll preview to my employees. Basically, what we're trying to do here is say on a Monday of a pay week, here's what your paycheck's gonna look like, let me know by a certain date if it's off. And what we're trying to do here is make sure they've logged their hours that we're not missing anything, okay? So this is a great example of a task that I used to do myself every two weeks. And because it was recurring, because it was really simple once you know I had it down, I've delegated it to my assistant, Viv, okay? Who is really phenomenal and, and is, is, is great. I've delegated it to her and we've set it as a due date of, you know, we set the first date and then we set it to repeat. Okay. So this repeats every two weeks on a Monday. All right. So we don't have to come into the system every, you know, I don't have to keep assigning this task to her every two weeks on a Monday, Viv will have this task to do. If she forgets how to do it, this is where this description comes into play. I love using video demos. Okay. So I use Loom for uh, video demos, you can use BombBomb, you can use any of those, you know, really quick record your screen software. I record a demo for her on how to do it. 
Okay, and it looks like I've had some evolution with this too. I've recorded a video, then maybe we're doing it a little bit different. Maybe we have a new way of doing overtime as well. So this is me assigning that task to her. And this is recurring. Okay, that one's for her. This one's for me, payroll. So I could have her submit payroll, but I like to have my eyes on it every single uh, two weeks, make sure my payroll looks good. So this is a task for me that every two weeks I'm going to submit payroll. Okay, so that's something I have to do today, make sure it gets done so that um, I wait on Friday. Generally with Asana, and I recommend this for whatever tool you're using, if you have something that's really important like this, give yourself a buffer, right? So if I don't, so this is actually, you know, I need it done by Thursday. I have it due on Wednesday. That way, if I have a crazy day, I'll be okay. All right. All these tasks here are recurring. So forecast cash flow. This is something that I do every single week on a Friday. And I have an attachment here to Google Drive, that cash flow projection. So I'm going to click on this, work on it, see how my cash flow is looking, mark it complete. The next week, it'll come up again for me to work on. Okay. And I found, again, the true power of this tool is to really spend time establishing those recurring tasks, because when they pop up, you're like, wow, yeah, I completely forgot about that. That's really important. I'm glad that my system reminded me about it. Okay, so you can see a bunch that I have here. The other thing, it's not really a recurring task, but it does point to the, you know, get it out of your head and into the system is I use it for tasks that are way out in the future. And I just had a really good example of this happen um, two or three weeks ago. So I have an online course and I have a community within that course. And I really uh, get pretty personal with my students. Um, I get to know them really well. I had one student of mine back in February. We were just talking, we got off of business stuff. We were just talking personal stuff, told me about how he's got his wedding coming up in September. We we're talking about, oh, with COVID, will it still happen? Whatever. I, in March, made a task for two days before uh, this gentleman's wedding. Uh, wish, Adam, congratulations. Okay, I did that in March. I completely forgot about it. I hadn't been talking with Adam too much. He's, you know, he's doing well. He hasn't needed much of my help. That task came up. I saw it and I had no idea what the heck it was. I looked in and there was a description with our email correspondence. So I was able to send him a text message, you know, Hey, congratulations, you get married this weekend. And I like, it, it made me look really good, right. To Adam. And I do care about Adam. It's just one of those things like you wouldn't expect anybody random to remember. I felt so great about my system in that point because, um, it worked, right? I saw it come up, wasn't really sure what it was, but the context was there. And that's an example of something that our brains just can't do, right? We can't six months from now, remember on a specific date that we need to do something. And, and so, you know, really trusting the system can be extremely important for that, okay? Uh, I'll just stop for a quick second. Any questions, comments, um, and, we'll, and then we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep churning. Yeah, I don't have the question tab open. I'm afraid okay. what it might do to my screen if I do open it. But okay. let, I've got it open. There aren't any so far. Okay. You got the Q&A tab? Yeah. Okay. All right. Chip says there are no questions so far. All right. Cool. Sounds good. So go ahead uh, and put them in there, though, if you all have questions. Yep. Sounds good. Um, okay. So, so generally, if you're getting in, again, if you have nothing right now, signing up for a free Asana account, you can just start making tasks or, you know, to-do list, any, any of those little softwares, just start to get things there. That's step one, start to get things there and start to trust it, okay? That is crucially important. Once we do that, once we've established that, hey, this is the system where when I wanna know what I have to do today, this is my list. Once we do that and we trust it, then we can start to explore some really cool features of it. And I'll bring up as we're here right now, the list view is how I like to work. I like to work kind of sequentially, I like to see what's kind of due. And these, these, um, these are either tags or projects. And what's great about them is you can click on them to filter it down, right? So I have a couple things here you see for 277 Depew. So if I click on this, it's going to automatically bring me to a filtered view of all those tasks for 277 Depew. And this is a project, which we're going to get into uh, um, separately. But we can, we can always filter this down, all right? Now there's projects and there's tags. Projects are pretty defined. Projects typically will have a start and end date. They might have a project manager. Um, there's a pretty rigid construct behind a project, okay? I don't set up too many projects. 
Um, really just, you know, the few that I know are going on at a certain point in time. Tags are a little bit more free for all. So tags are more like, um, I just want to be able to filter by this. And I found tags to be the most uh, useful when I think about context of work, okay? And if anybody, you know, who's um, as, as read or listened to Getting Things Done, David Allen, always thinking about like, okay, we're making a task list and then you try to batch into the context that you can get the work done. And so what I do is I, I have a tag, for example, for car, okay? So what that means is like, all right, I'm driving a lot during a day, right? I like to be productive. I like to be safe, but productive, right? And one thing I can do is I can make phone calls, right? So if I have a phone call, I'll typically tag it for car. So if I hop in the car and I got an hour drive or something, I can go to my task list before I start driving, click on the tag for car. It's like, oh yeah, I got to call Frank. Why don't I give him a call as I get on the road here? Nice and easy. So that's a context tag that really helps me, right? Uh, another thing you do is, is, is like a, a tag for home, right? What are some of those things that I need to do at home? And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it, I will. Beyond just business, I use this for personal stuff too. And I think that is extremely important to have it all in one place and have a system that allows you to separate. So I'm allowed to, within Asana's constructs, have my different businesses here and then even have a personal one too. That way it's all in one place, okay? So in my personal project here, um, I have the things that I do at home, right? So I have to order new checks. I have to bring in the hoses and the sprinklers and I have to you know, think about new auto, audio books to listen to. So everything is here, not just all the business stuff, okay? All right, so we're looking at this list. We can filter it. We can use tags. We have all those cool shiny colors. When we click on a task, we have the context. We also have the ability to do subtasks within, okay? So um, this would be something where there's multiple steps to something. So maybe for this arranged drywall walkthrough, maybe I need to uh, confirm schedule with rough electrician. Okay, and then maybe I need to call Mike to schedule. Maybe there's a couple tasks within that that I have to knock off. Maybe some of these can be delegated, okay? So who are tasks assigned to? Now you'll notice that most of what we're looking at is assigned to me, but we can delegate within our team too. Our VA, our, the other folks on our team, and we should be doing that delegation. So if I want to assign to somebody else, I can just come here and do that. And that delegation is complete with or without a due date. And these subtasks themselves, operate just like a task, meaning when I click this arrow to go over to it, I can add all of the detail in the subtask that I could add in the parent task, okay? So you can really nest some, some extreme level of detail in these tasks to make sure we have all the information and the context to get things done, all right? Also, you know, I, I kind of blew by it, but conversations can happen here. So let's say that this is a task that I am going to work on, but I need some help on it, right? Call Mike to, to schedule. Maybe I'm going to assign this to Viv, okay? And maybe I'm going to, um, you know, give her a FYI, Mike is unavailable, okay? And so that at mention to her, will give her a little notification that Nick's trying to talk to you. She can kind of like it. Not meaning I, I get it. So it's a whole conversation can happen with these tasks as well. Okay. All right. So let's then talk a little bit more about how we can like differentiate tasks and organize our tasks within our setup. At the very least, as I mentioned, you have a list, right? That list can be viewed in a calendar if you'd prefer to view it like that. This calendar could be synced if you'd like it. To be honest, I don't sync this with anything because I go to Asana regularly. There's no point for me to bring it up into my calendar because I have it. I have the Asana app on my phone. It's really what dictates my work. Appointments show up in my calendar. Tasks show up in Asana. So that's my kind of golden rule there. Okay. And you can see that I have all my stuff sorted out. They'll try to color it based on the tags and the projects that you've assigned. So like this red here, Oakvale happens to be that red color. Um, this opportunities project happens to be that orange color, et cetera. Okay. So I, if I'm on today, I can kind of see everything that's lined up. All right. So let's talk about projects. All right. Projects, again, start and end date, 
typically we have a really specific goal with our project and, um, and we are all working toward getting that done. All right. So for example, now, we're, you know, a lot, a lot of folks here maybe are flipping, right? Uh, we're doing renovations. So we could get to a point of actually having our project schedule on here. Okay. Now, these would be tasks that I would say we probably wouldn't really assign to somebody. So, you know, Asana was designed probably for people who are on their computer doing work for the most part, you know, that's kind of like how the look and feel is. When we're building a project schedule, I would suggest we're probably doing less assigning of stuff and attaching of documents and we're doing more of an overall schedule outlook, okay? So I clicked on 186 Elm. Well, the first thing I'll bring up is you'll notice these drop down arrows here. Within a project, we can actually have something called sections. Sections within the project helps us to organize that project even more. You can see up top, I have my admin. So this would be things like, as you can see, ordering windows, um, you know, updating the schedule. And then I have my actual work that I'm going to do on a project. So envision that you're about to start a renovation, a flip of some kind, right? What tool are you using to track that schedule, if any? Okay. Asana was not designed for construction project management. However, in lieu of having anything else and in, in looking to have one single source of truth, I think it's an amazing tool to do that. If you really are getting into, you know, construction project management, you may be using a tool like Builder Trend or Co-Construct to manage those complex schedules. But again, if you're currently using nothing or if you're using a calendar or Excel, Asana can be a great starting point for a construction schedule. What I'm showing right now is again, a list view within a project, okay? So I'm, a list view within a project is what I'm showing. And you see, I have some columns here for assignee and due date. What's cool about projects is we can actually add more fields to this, okay? So not only do I have an assignee and a due date, but I can actually add fields to this um, to help filter this, this thing out a little bit more as well, right? So I could say, um, you know, maybe I could put in here, um, contractor is the name of the title. Like maybe you have like three or four different subs that you use, okay? or 10, whatever the, the case might be. So right now I'm adding a field to the project itself, okay? All right, so I'm adding this field. We can change those colors if we want to. Notice I have the choice to, maybe this is a field I'm gonna use a lot in the future. I could make it available to my other projects. For now, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna create that field. All right, I created that field and now I have that extra column over here where I can start to, um, I can start to, to fill that in. So, you know, this one's the electrician, this one's the plumber. Okay. I don't think I have any HVAC in here, but you guys get kind of, kind of the idea, right? Let's say that this is the carpenter. Okay. So then you can filter this whole thing and say, okay, well, give me just the tasks that the electrician is doing, that the plumber is doing, et cetera. Right. Um, and you can add any of those fields, right? You can, you can have different types of um, of fields based on the project you're doing. I'm going to show you in a bit a software project that I worked on that's completely different. Okay. And again, right now I'm still in the list view, but I'm in the list view within the context of this project, which turns on some of the bells and whistles of Asana, most of which are still included in the free version, by the way. Um, so again, we haven't gone into anything that's, you know, paid yet. Okay. So I'm in this list view. Another view we might be interested in if we're doing a construction project is the timeline view. Now, this one would be something that is paid, meaning not only do I have a due date, but I actually have a start date as well. So this would be the one level up to a paid subscription of Asana, which in my opinion is well worth it, but just so you're aware. So this timeline view was new probably about a year or two ago where we actually have start and finish dates and dependencies, okay? So here I have my demo and, and rough ends, and then I have kind of a sequential, almost like a Gantt chart, not quite, almost like a Gantt chart of dependencies and everything flowing down from the various sections, okay? And because we have dependencies built in, as I move the one, kind of everything pushes to the right. Extremely useful for construction project management, okay? Uh, and then 
I, I can even, you know, extend this to be more than one day. And if I want to see the details of that, right. And I think I have this order windows in here, see the details of that. Maybe I have my, my spec sheet from the windows right there. Right. So that context is always going to be there for us. Okay. This timeline view is pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Again, I would say that's not quite as good as something like builder trend co-construct, but if you are starting from nothing and we want a single source of truth, this is a great place to start. And of course we got our calendar view as well. We want to see that. I love how you can click and drag and move things around. It's very interactive, like you would expect a calendar to be, but you'll be surprised at how some of these uh, software packages, you know, you have to click into them and, and physically change the dates to do anything with it. Uh, all right, I'll bring up the board view as well. The board view, you guys are potentially uh, familiar with like Kanban as a, as a means of working tasks across, or you could just use the board view as a way of differentiating. So what the board view does is takes our sections and establishes them as columns. And we can then see what is going on in our project at, at different places. And again, I use this a lot for my custom software that I'm building out for my customers. I'll have different you know, functionality sets right there and I'll add in our, our features as, as cards here, okay? Really cool. And what I really like about this too, and I think this changed probably eight months ago, is Asana used to make you decide whether you want your project to be a board project or a list project. And I hated that because I, I often wasn't sure. I'd say, well, I like the features of the list, but the board is good. And you couldn't really switch them. And that was kind of a problem. They've since uh, resolved that. So the same tasks are just viewed in different ways. I'm either viewing from a list or I'm viewing from a board, okay? So huge improvement and I mean, you've heard me say they've, they've changed this, they've changed that. What I really like about Asana is they iterate quite frequently to make improvements to the product, okay? So um, this is an example of a construction project. Again, um, I use it certainly for all the admin stuff within my construction projects. I also use it for a timeline from time to time. I have some clients that we're using Builder Trend for, but so I'm breaking my own rule about single source of truth, but um, always the administrative tasks within a project are always going to be in Asana, always. Even though Builder Trend, those other tools have to-do lists and everything like that, I find that if I start logging things there, they won't hit my daily workflow. I need it all to be in one place. Asana's that place, I trust it, and uh, I'm confident I'll get everything done, all right? So that's an example of like a, you know, a rehab project. I'm gonna show you two, um, this was, this was actually the build of one of my courses, so Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. And um, this is so just a little bit of a different type of project. So maybe you're doing like a, a website revamp or you're building out a, a proposal for investors, something a little bit less hands-on, you know, you're not doing the construction work, more computer type work. Um, so I'll just show you what this project, because this actually surprised me. And by the way, I'm gonna, I can minimize this drawer too, to make it look a little better. This surprised me when I went into here the other day. Uh, this was quite a quite a significant course that we built, and I built the entire thing using Asana as you know the guide for that. So I had a section for course content where I literally every single lesson I laid it out here. Okay, and this was really helpful even before I started recording the lessons to just help me visualize it. Right, so uh, you know I can look at you know, what am I putting in these different modules? How's it going to look as opposed to just, you know, starting to record, right? I was able to see it, move it around, adjust things a little bit. Uh, and, and I had, you know, a lot more structure to recording this course. Notice too, I have subtasks on almost every one of these. So basically what I would do is I would record the, my uh, lesson and then I assigned to my assistant, Viv, to uh, export it and to upload it into our course software, which is Kajabi, okay? By the way, the reason these are ghosted out, if you haven't gotten that, they're, they're completed tasks. So I'm currently showing completed tasks just to share what this project looked like. You know, after I created the course, I had to get ready for the webinar. So I had my whole webinar launch there, you know, as far as establishing a slide deck, inviting people to it, testing it, all of that stuff was in, was in Asana. 
I relaunched the course. So I launched it once in the fall of 2019 and I relaunched in 2020. So this is again, same project, but I'm adding different lessons there. All right. And now I have a little bit more I'm going to do. So if I feel, if I toggle this back to incomplete tasks, there's still some things that I want to record. I want to record some bonus episodes. Um, and you know, there's still some things that I, I'm going to do. So this, this project, you know, it's kind of got, it's kind of come to an end, but there's still a few things I'm, I'm tackling with it. So I'm keeping it live. All right. If I go to the board here, um, you can see how those sections kind of lay out here. Um, and one thing I can do, you can add sections right there as well. Um, and I mean, one thing that is essential for any of these boards, these Kanbans, is again, the interactive ability. So just like on a calendar, how I can move things around, I can change the duration, I can click and drag things around here as well, right? So I can start to, to see what's, what's happening. And one thing that you can do with a project, and this is something that, um, that some of my clients like to do, I'll bring this back. I'm just going to create a new project to show this. Okay. So I'm creating a sample new project here, indicate the team and then the privacy. And notice here it says default view. And again, it used to say view and you just had to pick one, but now I have a default view and then we can always switch to the other ones. Okay. I'm going to make this a, a, a public project for the entire team. I'm just going to create, it's going to be blank. Okay. Nothing in it. Here I have my board. Okay. Um, we can actually set up our fields. So some people really like to do this. So field for status. Okay. And it's more like um, new in progress waiting complete. Okay. So Asana by default has in, incomplete complete, but sometimes if we want to see everything kind of laid out, we might want a more specific list of statuses. Okay. And um, what we can do then, and I want to be able to I'll go back to my list here. Okay, so um, so I can have a you know uh, um, complete web uh, wireframes. Okay, my status is here, and I can say that that is new. I haven't really even done anything with it. Um, I can is in progress. Okay. So this is a way of giving us a little bit more context uh, as to where these tasks sit, as opposed to just complete and incomplete. All right, and I see people do this quite a bit. And then if you really want to, and this is a paid feature, but Asana has these rules that, okay, when I move it to complete, it actually marks it as complete. So you could do that, all right? But projects can be as simple as this, or they can be certainly more complex. You notice that when I was creating that project, I had the ability to use a template, okay? Again, a huge time-saving piece, especially I found if you're doing a construction project, something that takes the same kind of shape uh, every time you do it, right? So I'm typically doing my rough-ins, I'm doing my drywall, I'm doing my finish work, I'm doing my punch out, right? So I, I've established kind of that structure in that context. You can create a template for that. All right. So if I wanted to do that, let's say this 186 Elmwood. Okay. I can take this here and I can uh, convert it to a template. Okay. So if I like the way this project looks, I spent a lot of time with custom fields, with, with sections, with all of that, I can convert it to a template here. And then it's going to be in my template library for future use. So we can use those templates. We can also use a template provided by Asana. And I've been like, I've been using more and more of these because they are so well done. So here you see the template that I just created, but they also have a bunch of these kind of default ones that, that will show up. Okay. So let's say I want to do one for new employee onboarding. I can use this template and I'm just clicking through to create it. And boom, it's right there. And what I really like about Asana, it doesn't just create it and say, okay, good luck. It actually creates tasks that show you how to use it, 
Okay, so eventually I'm gonna get rid of all these tasks and put in my actual ones, but it's showing you how they wanted the entire template to work. Okay, so it's showing you how to use the fields, how to use the sections, how everything kind of comes together. And all of this is included for free with Asana, all of these templates. Usually it's not perfect, right? The template that they get, but you can start with a template and edit it, adjust it to make it right for you, okay? Um, I'm gonna stop for a second to see if we have any questions and, um, and then we can kind of do a bit of a closeout, but anything in the Q and A or? You have anything in Q and A, Chip? Nope. Not okay. Not well, I have, a, I have a question or two for you. <laughs> yeah. Nick, uh, I've, got, I've got a question or two for you a little bit selfishly, if you don't mind me asking. Okay, so when in your template, can you have, um, can you set it up so that once you pick the deadline, if it's a recurring project, uh, you've got all of your tasks in that project. And once you pick the deadline, uh, will it auto populate all of the tasks, you know, working backwards? Yes. And that's, I, I probably went through it too fast. That's why it asks you for the date. So notice it gives me dates here. These dates were issued off of assuming the project started today. So that exact scenario. So when you have your template, but can it work backwards? So if you start with your, your end date, like, uh, okay, I want to have this particular video done by a certain day and I put it there and then it backwards populates all your tasks with the due dates. I don't think so. I haven't done that. I don't think it does. Uh, so I think you'd have to do a little mental math and just Wouldn't say be cool if it did. Yeah. So like, uh, and I'll look at, I'll see if I can get it to happen. Um, but I think you base it all off the start date. Let's just investigate quickly. We won't take too much time, but we'll just do a quick, we'll do that same exact one and use it and end it. Yeah, it looks like we can. Um, and I don't know how they set up these tasks, but I would assume this is exactly how it would work. So let's see how that one flows in. Yeah. Um, and I think when, you, when you're setting up your template, you're establishing those rules. So end date yeah. minus 10, end date minus 15, et cetera. Uh, I love it, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is really good because, uh, you know, if you're, if you're producing content regularly, you know. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Okay. What was your second question? Well, I think that's both of them, you know, oh, can, okay, cool. gotcha. can you auto populate dates and then can you do it backwards? Gotcha. Um, yeah. Because that's something that's important to me that I'm looking for something to do it. Yeah. Do with it. I mean, in general, what I'm more and more surprised at is like, and you heard me give that example about the wedding is like getting the system, to do all that, all that stuff that our brains just don't have room for, you know, like how long would it sit, take you to sit and lay that all out manually and you, you obviously have done it many times already. You probably you have to do it once to establish that template. But if we can save ourselves an hour or two every time we're starting a new project, it just means our project is more fruitful. It's more valuable. We can spend time doing the actual work. Right? Hey, Wilson's and, a question. And, you know, it's also, um, even if you've done it a dozen times before, there's a possibility that you'll forget one of the details this time Absolutely. through. So it, it, it's a reminder. Um, Chip says Wilson has a question. Yes. So uh, I'm not seeing the Q&A, but I had him type it in the chat. And it says, is there an Asana app for your phone or is it linked from your calendar or reminders in your phone? There is an app on your phone and it is phenomenal. Great user interface, looks exactly like this. Um, reminders if you want them. I kind of turn mine off again, because I'm just, I'm just trained myself to keep logging in and looking at it. Um, it's a phenomenal app, iPad, uh, Android, all that stuff. It looks great. It works great. Um, so the answer is yes, it's really good. And it's free, you know, with uh, your subscription. All right. Now, I don't want to throw shade at any of the competitors, but you've looked at all the other things that are out there and, and Asana is your choice, right? That's right. Yep. It started as my choice because of cost. To be honest, um, you know, I was using Asana free for a long time uh, as my business got a little bit more complex and I saw some of the features. I think I pay, um, you pay by the seat. So I, I don't know how many users are in there. So I think I'm on the $10 per month per user. And I, 
the user interface is also important to me. If it doesn't look right and it doesn't operate the way I intuitively think it should, I'm probably not going to use it. So I found it to be the best combination of price, user interface, comprehensiveness of tasks. I mean, the fact that I can, there's rarely a time where I use all of these, but I can add a description, a file, a conversation. I can just add a ton of context to it. That's important to me, especially when I'm delegating to my assistant. So yeah, it's, it's certainly my favorite. All right. Um, and we do have some questions at Q and A. I was able to open it up there and I'm, I'm looking at them right now, but um, one of the things too, about um, your one source of truth um, is if I were going to switch to this, I would want one calendar because, you know, I have appointments, I have, you know, calls that pop in and, you know, come in from Calendly and uh, then I have tasks and I just want one place to go look at it. You can integrate it, right? That's absolutely true. Yes. You can integrate it with your calendar. And then what it'll do is it'll show up like if you're using Google, you know, you have different calendars. It'll show up as a sign. So you can turn it on and off as well. Okay. So the integration is, is there, it's all free and it's, it's a simple thing to do. Yes. Okay. All right. Zeke wants to know, are you using Asana for SQP? Uh, yeah. So, um, tell us all what SQP is. Yeah. So, um, so the standard operating procedures. Is, oh, is that SOP? Oh yeah. It's SOP. I know what SOP is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was figuring that was right. Zeke or yeah. I would. Okay. Um, so yes, you certainly can. What I find is useful for that um, is a board view potentially. So you make a project called standard operating procedures in a board view. This is not this, but let me just show you this story board view. So it's important too to realize um, it's task management is what this is used for, but I often use tasks to assign just things here, right? So these are not things things I'm actually going to do, but this is just a way of me organizing. And this is what I would recommend if you're doing like an SOP uh, situation is have your different business functions and then start to lay out, okay, uh, recruitment. Okay. And, you know, let's just, let's just bang one out real quick. Let's just kind of create one and they might even have a good template for it. We'll just check uh, business plan. So let's see here. I'm just going to do This one, um, just because it's a, it's a, okay. So let's say that we had recruitment. Maybe we, or, you know, let's take this in the context of we're flipping, right? So let's say uh, acquisitions, no, we'll go marketing. There you go. Acquisitions, uh, transactions. Uh, I don't know if we're doing buy and hold, we can do uh, sustain or, or hold is what we can call it, whatever, you know, your different business processes. Okay. And we'll get rid of this one. All right. And then I would, I would do exactly that. So, um, so let's say that we have marketing. It's like, uh, you know, list building. Okay. And then here we're putting the description. Maybe we're putting sub tasks that are different parts of that workflow. Maybe we're putting a link to a chart or a graph or a document that tells our business, this is how we do it, right? Same thing for, um, you know, um, lead follow-up. I don't know, you know, whatever those things are, we establish those as little cards here and have exactly that in one view, okay? So I think it's a great question, Zeke, and it's something that some of my customers have done in, in different to different degrees. It is a great way to visualize as one. Here's my whole thing. Instead of like a Word document that just has all this kind of stuff going linearly down, I can kind of see cross-functionally what I'm doing and then dig into these to see all of the context. And I'm not assigning them, right? If I assign it to myself with a due date, it hits my task list. It's not a task to get done. What I'm doing is I'm using this software for something a little bit different just to help me stay organized as to, you know, these bigger picture items. But can these become a template? Yeah, absolutely. So this That's standard good. meeting, I can go save layout or uh, convert to template right here. All right. And now it's, now it'll be in my, you know, so as you do your updates and you make it yours, you make it uh, however well, you 
you want it to, to look, you can convert it to that template. Yeah, I wasn't talking about the entire thing. I'm talking about, let's say, in your marketing and list building, let's say we decide to go to a different city. Mm-hmm. And so we want to take the list building and create a set of tasks around that for that city. And, and all of the, all of those things, can we make those into individual templates that they, we, we can then um, bring in and. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd call that kind of like a launch plan, right? Like a, a new market launch plan. You have your marketing part of it and, and you know, that's what you're working on there. I think absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, that application works. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Valerie wants to know, does Asana send a prompt for overdue tasks and can it help um, maintaining a project budget? Yeah, well, on the first question, it can send a prompt on overdue tasks if you want it to do so. So that's just setting up your alerts and that's uh, they have different ones on your phone. They can email you as well. I personally turn all those off. And again, the only reason I do that is because I'm in there every day, I'm seeing it. I don't need a sign to tell me this is overdue because I'm looking at it. So I tend to turn off those alerts, but you can do email alerts, you can do pop-ups on your phone, pretty much any of that. Uh, as far as managing a budget, um, I wouldn't say that it is the best for that. Um, you can certainly put fields into your tasks for, you know, what is your projected spend and what is your actual spend. However, Asana is not going to really do much math on that. It's not going to give you a total of the two of those. So uh, that's something that we, you know, I haven't seen Asana be successful in doing that budget part. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Any other questions? Put them in there. Uh, what I want to do while we're waiting for your questions is, um, if you have any more, first of all, everybody, uh, don't you, do you all understand now why I like Nick so much and appreciate him? Uh, what a great explanation of the software and a use of technology to make the business go. And so everybody show your appreciation in the chat by typing a whole bunch of sevens. That's how we applaud someone on Zoom. Uh, at least that's my understanding of it. And so we try to do that around here. Yep. And so sh- show your sevens to Nick and appreciate him. And uh, why, now I want to turn over here and uh, I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute, Nick, but I want to turn over here and talk to Chip. Yep. Do we have winners? We do. We, we got seven guesses today. So the number, well, first off, did anybody send a guess in on Facebook? Uh, I don't know. I'm not looking at Facebook. Okay. All right, well, Let's just say if you want to win, you've got to be on the Zoom call. How about you, that? There you go. <laughs> All right. So uh, the winner is Nina Sayo. Oh, the number was two, by the way. Winner okay. is Nina Sayo at 14. So she was off by 12. And then the second place would be Chesley Charles. And Chesley said would have to leave the call at one o'clock. So probably not on right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think she is. Um that's fine. We'll, we'll let both of them know. And, and, uh, you remind me. And so we appreciate everybody else. Thank you for playing. Remember you can go to R E bit.ly forward slash R E quick start and sign up for the course. And if, if you want to take the quick start course, it is regularly $297, but pandemic priced at 97. If you use the coupon code social distance learning, Nick, thank you, my man. Awesome job. Appreciate you being here with us today, taking your time. Any parting words for us? Uh, well, it's my pleasure to be back with you. I, I think everything you're doing is fantastic. Um, your passion for teaching is amazing. I, I'm starting to really get that as well. So I love to do this kind of stuff, um, to just share my knowledge. If anybody who's been on has some questions or wants to follow up separately, um, you know, I, I Email me directly, nick at incomedigs.com. I'd uh, be happy to uh, go through if you're trying to assess whether to switch from software or anything, anything software or business uh, process related, I'd be happy to help you with. So just a pleasure to be here and yeah. uh, thank you. happy to do it again some other Before time. Before you get out yeah. of here, you've got courses on a bunch of things. And I know you do some courses on QuickBooks. Tell us a little bit about some of the courses that you have so everyone will know. You guys, you need to get over to incomedigs.com and check out what he has to offer. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, our, our main course uh, on Income Digs is Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. So what we're teaching there is QuickBooks Online, which is a phenomenal tool for accounting and bookkeeping. We're teaching you how to use it for real estate investing. So if you're flipping houses, 
If you're doing uh, buy and holds or a combination of that, if you're loaning money, any of that, we're going to teach you how to manage the books. So that's Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We have another one coming out shortly called Podio Crash Course. So Podio is one of those software uh, that is, is growing in the real estate uh, investing community. So we're going to have one on that. One Just of my teams set up Podio. Podio Workspace. How do you load it? Oh, yeah. So um, that one, there's a lot of people clamoring for that. I really want that one. That one will be available uh, this fall. And then beyond that, tons of free stuff too. I, I give away most everything for free. So uh, rehab analyzers, rental analyzers, uh, QuickBooks setup, cheat sheets, all that kind of stuff is available for free. And then if you're interested in taking things a little bit further, we do uh, custom coaching as well. All right. There you have it. That's Nick Baldo and the website is IncomeDigs.com. Nick, thanks for joining us today. We're going to grab the audio out of this and turn it into a show. I, I'm pretty sure we can make that work. So we will be um, back here tomorrow night with Dave Dubow talking about raising private money. And I hope that you will be here. If you haven't registered already, go to bit.ly forward slash Faria, F-A-R-E-I-A 108. No spaces in there. And we'll see you tomorrow night for that. Hey, Roger. And, yeah. So uh, Nina says that she already won the quick start before. So uh, Tom gone on the call today wants her. All right. You okay with that, Nina? <laughs> oh yeah. She's already said in the chat. Yeah. It's yours, Tom. All right. So uh, uh, Chip will get me the names and I'll send out the coupon codes and we'll send everybody a replay link tomorrow. Thanks everybody. We'll see you soon. <laughs>